Okay, so get ready to put your math skills to work to solve this interesting little math word problem. Matter of fact, let me go ahead and read the problem. It is the following. Your work shift is 40% done. If you have three hours left, how long is your shift? Okay, so that is the question. Feel free to use a calculator. But if you can figure this out, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. I'll share the correct answer in just one second. Then, of course, I'm going to solve this problem step by step. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And it really is my true passion to try to make learning math as easy as possible. So if you need assistance in mathematics, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. All right, so one more time before I show you the answer. So your work shift is 40% done. If you have three hours left, how long is your shift in hours? And the correct answer is five hours. That is how long your entire shift is. So if you got this right, let's go ahead and celebrate by giving you a nice little happy face in A plus a 100% and multiple stars. So you could brag to your friends and family that indeed you are a certified professional expert in the area of solving percent math word problems. And actually, I'm going to be using algebra to solve this problem. And I did want to state that initially because a lot of you uh, could have figured this out, you know, using common sense or maybe just your overall uh, general math skills. So that is fantastic. So you don't have to use algebra to figure this problem out, but algebra is such an awesome tool. It makes things so much easier. So if, if you didn't get this right, uh, you'll understand exactly uh, what's going on and you'll be looking like this person in just a few minutes. So let's go to get into the solution. And the first thing we need to recognize is that we are dealing with a math word problem. So always use the rule of three, which is Read the problem at least three times before you start writing stuff down. I know we're so excited, like, oh, yes, I can solve this problem. And you really have to kind of discipline yourself uh, because we get excited. We're like, oh, I know exactly what to do. And uh, oftentimes your first impulse is often uh, correct. However, it's just good practice to stop and just read the problem over and over again. Really think about it. Let it sink in and make sure you understand uh, the question. Okay, so always use the rule of three. But uh, after that, what you want to do is try to model the problem. Try to visualize it in some manner, because if you can visualize it or model it, it's so much easier to see the solution. So let's go ahead and interpret this problem using some sort of model. I like to use graphical models, but again, this is where you can be creative. Whatever uh, model that works for you, uh, so you can interpret the problem as long as someone else can understand your work. That's kind of a good litmus test. So our uh, work shift is 40% done. So we're pretty excited about that. We're like, all right, 40% done. So we have uh, obviously some more work to go. Okay. And if we're 40% done, how much more work uh, in terms of percent do we have to go? Well, hopefully you're saying 60% uh, more until I'm um, finished. So if you have three hours left, how long is your entire shift? So let's go ahead and model this uh, question uh, this way. So here is our shift. So let's call it this entire span right here in hours. Now, what we know is that we are 40% completed with our shift. So for 40% um, done with the shift, that means we have 60% more to go so you know we're not you know uh you know terribly excited about that we're like oh i got more than half uh time to finish my shift now by the way some of you out there that uh, have not worked shift work i actually had the pleasure of working shift work many years ago uh you know so i know what it's like to work all kinds of crazy hours so some of you might be saying oh boy i can relate to this problem i worked all sorts of shifts just as a little aside i used to work six p.m. to 6 a.m. Then I'd switch to 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. when I used to supervise chemical uh, operations. I've done a lot of di different things in my life. And then, of course, in the military, you really don't get any sleep 
but your whole life is dictated by work shifts. So those of you that have not yet uh, entered the workforce, you'll be super excited to know that you'll probably work in some sort of shift as well. Not all of you, but uh, some of you. Okay, so here is the situation. We are 40% done, okay? Uh, and the question is asking us, how long is our entire shift? So all we have to uh, go by in terms of numbers is that, well, the 40% I don't really have a time associated with this, but I do know uh, that 60% of my shift is three hours. And really uh, right here is the key to unlocking the solution. So what we want to kind of think about this is saying, all right, well, if three hours represents 60% of the shift, well, maybe we could turn this into a lovely math prom, uh, kind of its own little sub prom to figure this out. And that's exactly what we need to do. So 60% of the shift is three hours, okay? Now, what is the shift? Well, that's some unknown period of time. And of course, we're working in hours, so we'll just uh, think of the shift in terms of uh, some uh, time span in hours, but 60% of whatever the entire shift is, is three hours. So how do we solve this problem? Well, let's use algebra. And so instead of uh, the shift here, uh, let's go ahead and use uh, the variable x. So let's let x uh, equal or represent the entire uh, uh, time of the shift in hours. So now our problem really becomes this. 60% of x, and of course x is the, uh, the entire shift, 60% of the entire shift or x is 3. Okay, so now we just kind of translated this problem into this percent problem. Now, if you uh, didn't really kind of understand how to get to this point, but you're saying, hey, Mr. YouTube Math Man, I'm still pretty good with percents. That is fantastic. So go ahead and see if you can solve the problem at this point. 60% of X is three. Another way to uh, express this question is 60% of what number, okay, is three. All right, so the idea here is to solve for X and when we uh, solve for X, we will have uh, answered the question. So let's go ahead and take the next step, which of course is having you subscribe to my YouTube channel. I need your support. So, you know, that's why I'm asking for it. I wouldn't ask for your support if I didn't need your support. Now, I've been on YouTube for 10 plus years. I have over 2,000, well over 2,000 uh, math videos from basic math to advanced math. I have millions of views. Matter of fact, I think I might be up to like 70 million plus views, 517,000 subscribers. Yeah, I'm very, very excited and happy that I am uh, reaching people, but I want to reach more people, okay? Because there is an infinite amount of people out there that struggle in math, okay? Typically, they'll look like this and be like, I hate math, I'm bad at math. I just never understand this stuff. Well, that is not true, okay? So I'm trying to reach these folks. And of course, if you're just interested in math, that's awesome as well. But uh, here's the thing. I don't want anyone out there to give uh, up on themselves in terms of mathematics because that has serious consequences uh, in people's lives. I ran into so many people throughout the decades, I mean, countless people, and this is just too, far too common of a trend, of people that are like, you know, I was thinking I wanted to be an engineer or a scientist when I was younger, or I wanted to, you know, do this, that, and other thing, but I really, you know, was intimidated by the math, or I thought it was bad at math, so I went in a different direction. That is just, you know, that is not good, okay? Because even though you may want to do something else in life, you should never let math be a barrier to any, to considering any option, okay? Now, what, you know, what do you need to be successful in math? Well, you need two things. One, you need to know that there are no shortcuts. So you got to be willing to do the work. You know, if you're not willing to do the work, I don't have any answers for you. So that's the first thing. You have to work hard. Everyone does, okay? Now, the second thing you need is great comprehensive instruction that you like and understand, and that's where I want to try to help you. So I know I'm being a little bit long here with this little break, but uh, this is why I make these videos, okay? So by you subscribing, it really does help uh, YouTube kind of push out my content. And if you're going to do that, go ahead and hit that notification bell as well. Thanks for giving me a little bit of time to, uh, you know, kind of state my little commercial here, <laughs> commercial here, but it is important, okay, for me. So let's move on with the problem. And what we have here is a percent prompt. So we're trying to figure out 60% of X is three, but let's review this basic percent prompt uh, for those of you that might be confused on how to solve that problem. 
So let's suppose I said, uh, what's 7% 7 of 80? Okay, now 7% of 80, how do we answer this question? Well, hopefully you know that what we need to do is change uh, the percent to a decimal. Okay, so we're going to change 7% to the decimal point zero 0.07, right? So this is how we find a percent of a number. But how did this happen? Well, to change a percent to a decimal, what we do is divide by 100. And that's effectively the same thing as moving the decimal point over two places to the left. So if I have 7% or 7.0%, I just move that decimal point over two places to the left, I got 0.07, okay? So that's how we change a percent to a decimal. So once we uh, change the percent uh, to a decimal, so 7% is equal to 0 0.07, we just simply multiply it by the number we're trying to find the percent of. So 7% of 80, we'll just convert this to its decimal equivalent and multiply by 80. So 0 0.07 times 80 is 5.6. All right, so that's just a quick review on how to find the percent of a number because that's what we're gonna be doing right here. Okay, we wanna find 60% of this number, but this number is not a number, it's a variable, but no, uh, you know, that's not gonna let uh, us kind of, um, that's not gonna stop us from figuring this out because we need to use the same concept. Okay, so let's go ahead and take this question, right? 60% of X is three. Okay, now we know that 60% of the shift is three hours. So we're gonna use the same uh, strategy here. So what we're gonna do is uh, change the percent to a decimal. So 60% or 60.0%, we're gonna move the decimal point over two places to the left. So 60% as a decimal is point, uh, 0.6. Of course, we can just take 60 divided by 100. Now we're gonna take this 60% as a decimal and we're gonna multiply it by the number that we're taking the percent of. So 60% of X, just like 7% uh, of uh, whatever number I had back here, what was that, 80, right? So we're just gonna multiply, okay? So 60% so 60, uh, 60 of X is 0.6 times X, okay? We're just gonna multiply by this number. That number, of course, is a variable, but it's the same thing, right? So 60% or 0.6 times this mystery number X is. Now, anytime you see the word is in mathematics, it's always the equal sign. So is or is equal to three. Okay, so this is what we have here. We have a nice basic, basic algebraic equation. So 60% or 0.6 of a number X is equal to three. All right, now at this point, all we need to do is solve for X. So this is one approach to uh, solve basic uh, percent problems like this. Now, some of you out there, you know, uh, learn how to solve percent problems using different techniques. That's perfectly fine as long as you understand what you're doing and you can get the right answer. You don't have to do it this way, but this is uh, using algebra to solve percent problems is really just so awesome. Anyways, I just can't help myself, but let's go ahead and finish this up. So 0.6X is equal to three. Let's go into solve for x. So what we need to do here is divide both sides of the equation by 0.6. So we're going to get 3 divided by 0.6. And in our calculator, when we do that, we get 5. All right, so the shift is equal to 5 hours. Now, let's suppose some of you are like, I'm not sure you did this right, Mr. YouTube Math Man. Well, is there some sort of way we can uh, check this? Yeah, let's go ahead and check this real quick. So if the entire shift is 5 hours, okay, and we know that 60% of the shift, okay, is three hours. So 40% of the shift is, well, if this is three, 40% is gotta be five minus three or two, right? Because two hours plus three hours is a total shift of five hours. So let's see if two hours is, um, two hours out of these uh, five hours here is in fact 40% of the shift, okay? So this is a separate percent question. So we can kind of look at it this. Two is what percent of five? So two hours is what percent of the entire uh, five hour shift? Now, if we did this right, it should be 40%. So let's go ahead and answer that uh, question real quick. So two is what percent of five? So this is the part, this is the whole. So another type of percent question, right? So the way we're gonna answer this is just take the part here, two, and divide it uh, by the whole, which is five, so two, divided by five is 0.4. So this is a decimal, we want a percent, so what we need to do is multiply this by 100 or move the decimal point over two places to the right and we get 40%. So indeed, this makes sense. 
So two hours is 40% of our five hour shift. Okay, now uh, some of you might be still, you know, a little bit confused on percent or the basic algebra. Uh, definitely don't get discouraged. I have two great options for you, okay? Now, if you are a math student taking some sort of like algebra, pre-algebra, I'm gonna leave links to those courses uh, in the description uh, below. But a lot of you out there have been away from school for many years and you're just like, you know what, I want to kind of rebuild my math skills. Or maybe you're just not satisfied the first time you learn math in your life and you know you could just you know, do better deep down inside. You're like, boy, I could have done so much better in math. So I got two great courses for you to consider. Now, the first is called my foundations course. That's a little uh, mini boot camp uh, course for basic math. It's three chapters, self-paced. Uh, it's, it's not too long, but you are definitely going to have super strong, basic, practical math skills. So that's an excellent course for those of you that just kind of want to do a quick touch up on your basic math skills. You know, practical math uh, is particularly uh, just working with percent as that's critical. Now, for those of you that want to take it a step further and uh, also do uh, basic mathematics, check out my math skills rebuilder course. All right. So in this course, I also cover basic math. So basically everything that you're going to do in the foundation course, that's covered as well. But then I'm going to teach you a ton of algebra, a ton of geometry, uh, some basic trigonometry, and even some basic probability and statistics. You're going to have a very well-rounded math education by the time you finish this course. Now, obviously, this is much longer than the foundations course, but it's really up to you. Uh, so if you're interested in rebuilding uh, your math skills, whether at a basic level or a much more advanced level. These are two great options for you. Okay, so with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.